Alright, this is going to be talking about Terran vs. Zerg, showing a standard way to play TBZ. So, in general, TBZ can be played in two styles. It can be played with a bio style, which means you're using barracks units, marines, and medics supported by tanks and science vessels. Or it can be played a mech style, which is using primarily factory units, usually supported with science vessels as well. As well. Uh, it kind of depends on the map. Which ones? Bio is generally a pretty strong strategy on most maps. There's some maps, a good example is Destination, where it's not the strongest because of Destination's double bridges. Lurkers are really powerful on that. And also, a map like Destination can be pretty easy to just split the map. And if you split the map, in other words, both of you have equal bases, it's a big advantage for mech, because mech is very, very cost efficient in most cases, so you usually end up winning. But I'm going to be talking about Bio, because it's probably the most common style. You see it, I mean, you see mech fairly often, but you definitely see bio a lot more. So, just like with Terran vs. Protoss, uh, you start off with depot at 9 supply, which is what I'm doing here. And I like to scout after this depot, so that if Zerg is building a hatchery, going hatch first, I can attempt to deny that hatchery with my scout. So, what you're going to see in this build, and what the idea behind it is, is it's just pretty standard play. I'm going to get one Rax, I'm going to expand, then I'm going to get my aca my academy and start getting the marine, uh, getting stim and getting marine range. And then I'll get two more barracks, so I'll get three Raxes, and after I have three Raxes, I will go ahead and tech, start my tech, so I'll get my factory and my starport. I'll start the starport as soon as the factory is done, and then I will get this science facility, and usually about the time, and then I'll make a vessel as soon as science facility is done, and as soon as I get that first vessel, I will push out, and usually I'll have three tanks and a vessel, and a couple groups of marines and medics, and you'll push out, and you'll try to either kill Zerg's third base, or just straight up go into their natural and kill them, and so you can see there, I, I could have blocked that hatchery, but I'm playing against a computer in this video, so I didn't know how that would affect them, I just wanted them to be able to play normal, that was kind of weird the SCV glitched and got stuck on the same square as the drone. <laughs> so as you can see, Zerg is doing 12 hatch, so how quickly Zerg gets their pool and how basically how much of a rush they're doing determines when you can expand. In this case they're doing 12 hatch, so I can just go ahead and expand before building any marines, I don't even have to worry about that. So I go ahead and I start building my command center at the natural at 16. And then after that I will get gas and then I will get the academy. And you'll usually want to build a bunker shortly after you are getting that command center up so that if Zerg does mass some lings, you're safe from that. Because even if he's going 12 hatch, yes, that means he'll have a later pull and later lings, but the lings are still a danger, especially if he masses a decent number of them with speed, so you want to have that bunker there for safety purposes in most situations. Unless you really have a good scout, and it's just obvious he's not making any lings. So I'm lifting the racks off there, and that's another thing that I like to do is kind of wall off the natural so that if lings do try to run by, they're impeded in their motion, and it makes it harder for them to get in and surround my marines, which is when they're the most dangerous. If they come kind of in a line, they get picked off before all of them can start attacking. So my scout died. I'm sending out another one. It's really important to keep scouting Zerg because you do want to see what exactly Zerg is up to. As you can see there, I got my gas, and I will be getting the academy uh, shortly after this. And I'm just seeing what Zerg's up to. I'm seeing a decent number of lings. Three on gas. And I scout that there's no gas there, so... That means most likely Zerg's going to be pretty aggressive. Most likely a ling all in, or some sort of thing, because... That gas was kind of late, which means they're going to have slightly slower layer, slightly slower mutilus and such, depending on what they are teching and going for. But this is pretty close to standard from the Zerg. You can see I've got my bunker there. And then, so after this I'm going to get two more barracks. And the other thing I'll want to get, usually around 30 supply is a decent time for it. You'll want to start an engineering bay for two reasons. One is for the upgrades and two is turrets for either detection or for mutalisks. 
if Zerg is going for you know a two or three hatch lurker build, you'll, need, you'll probably want a turret or two to detect kind of at your front door in case they try a bust, because you might not have enough scans to last if they're busting. And more often than not, Zerg goes Mutalisk. And so you get a few turrets in each mineral line to defend. But what's important to understand is that the turrets aren't what defend the Muta. The Marines are what defend the Muta. The turrets are there to discourage the Muta from attacking and to buy time. Because if you don't have turrets anywhere, while you can be beat his Muta with your Marines, you'll have to run back and get back in position, which you won't have time for. Because with no turrets, you know, if your Marines are in your main base and he starts attacking your natural, you're, he's going to pick off 5-6 SCVs before your Marines can stim and get back over there. So those turrets buy you time, and they also just make him a little weary of attacking and kind of restrict his movement so that he can't go wherever he wants. And you usually get three to four turrets at the mineral line, and sometimes you'll have one or two, one or two turrets around your barracks so that the mutas can't camp over your barracks and just kill uh, all your reinforcements that are spawning. And so you can see I'm getting my second and third racks, and pretty soon after this I'll start the factory. I've got the second gas up now. Science vessels and tanks, science vessels in particular, but and to a lesser degree tanks are pretty gas heavy, so you are going to need two gas. And the first thing you want to get from the academy when it finishes is stim, and then you want to get range. Because you need stim to fight off any early attacks, and it's a lot more valuable than range. And I scout here that... Zerg has the lair and has the Hydra Den, so I'm expecting 3 hatch Lurker, so I'm adding an extra bunker in case I need it. It's a little bit of overkill, but I like to play it safe in case I need it, in case he tries to do some aggressive 3 hatch Lurker Ling type bust. You can see there I'm starting my factory. So it's 3 racks, 3 racks tech, 3 racks factory, starport, science facility. And I didn't see a spire, so I, you know. He's, there's really no way he's going for Mutalists, because Mutalists get pretty ineffective in the late game. They're only effective early on, because they're able to keep Terran in his base, which gives Zerg time to get set up, to set up their own third base and to research their Lurker tech. Because if Terran moves out with all his Marines most of the time, then Zerg can backstab and take out a bunch of turrets. So... Basically, in a, in a typical game flow, what you're aiming to do with this first attack here is to do some sort of damage to Zerg before they get on Hive Tech and have Defilers with Consume out. Because if Zerg gets to Defilers and Consume, like, totally unimpeded, you know, no damage dealt, able to drone up freely, all that kind of stuff, it becomes more difficult. You know, Terran is definitely at a strong advantage over Zerg in the kind of the early early game and the mid game because of how effective and how effective well used marines can be. So what happens is you try to do this push pre pre hive tech, pre defilers with consume timing, and Zerg tries to stave it off and then he pushes you back once he has defilers with consume because you have to back away because or because once he has consume he can use Dark Swarm and then you have to back away from those Dark Swarms. So he's able to push you back. And then Zerg will use that to take a fourth base and get to four gas, and then typically will switch to the endgame composition of Ultra Ling Defiler, which is a pretty tough composition to fight. Although nowadays there's beginning to be a mech switch that Terran can do, or if it gets to late game, uh, once you're on you know three plus bases as Terran, you switch and you start add it. You add you know two or three extra factories and go really heavy on the tanks, which are very effective against that endgame Ultra Ling combination, and it makes it also a little easier to defend defend bases from the extremely mobile ultra lane force that Zerg employs. So in, in, in a typical game, you know, what'll happen is Zerg will mostly be droning up and going for mutas, and they'll do what's called three hatch muta, which means they get three hatcheries and they save up larva and they get nine mutas at once, add two, and then they move out with 11 mutas, and they harass you, so you have to run your marines around and defend the mutalist harassed. And during this time, because you're busy defending, they safely set up a third and research lurkers, and then when their lurkers are out, they try to contain you if their mutalist harass kept you going for that long, and they have the ability to, or at the very least, they try to delay you and delay you until their hive tech and defies with consumer are out. 
at which point they can push you back again. But pre-defiler, you have to be careful because lurkers require decent marine control to deal with. If you basically the key to fighting lurkers with marines is you can't let your marines clump up too much because then the lurkers do massive damage and take them all out almost immediately. Because lurkers have a splash damage effect. So if you have a bunch of clustered marines, they're gonna get killed by lurkers super easily. So you have to do your best to spread them out. It's called splitting the marines. That's the important micro against lurkers. And it's kinda tricky if you do a bad job of it you'll get decimated pretty bad by lurkers, but if you're smart about it and effective, marines beat lurkers.